Bro, y'all seen the corruption exposed in the Young Thug case? It's crazy. The female, I'm not a lawyer on TikTok, she break it down. But I got a couple pieces I'm gonna show y'all because I wanna highlight this corruption. First, I'm gonna just give you a little backstory. During Young Thug's case, there was like a police chase where they say Young Thug did some things or whatever, it's like shootings. One of the dudes, he gets arrested that was inside the car, got shot, and he ended up going to the hospital and making a statement with the police saying Young Thug wasn't there or like, you know, he wasn't involved. However, that was never recorded and the police came back and investigated, I mean, had an interrogation and told him to change his story and put Young Thug in it. And the DA is saying that that never, like the first interview never happened. When you talk to your wife on an unrecorded line at Grady Hospital, there's no evidence that he did that. There's no evidence that will come in. And there's no evidence that Mr. Steele can bring to the court. And if he does, I would ask that he proper it. So, Your Honor, the problem that I have is, one, Mr. Steele is improperly suggesting to the jury, planting in the jury's mind, that this witness made certain statements to the police at the hospital when he did not. Mr. Steele doesn't have any evidence whatsoever, any statement. He doesn't have any recording. He doesn't have anything. He has not asked the witness. He has not done anything to present a statement at the hospital by this witness. And so then it's up to make his argument and child. Good afternoon, everyone. Can I ask you the $64,000 question, Mr. Steele, to begin with? <laughs> sure. Um, do you is there an interview of Mr. Bean at the hospital or detention, Grady detention facility? Yes, that's what he told me. Can I see it? That's what I've been asking for. Wait, what? No, no, no. You, do you have it? So do you is. have one? No, I'm asking for Well, okay. Here's our challenge. And unless you know there's one and the state told you they don't have one, then you don't really have a good faith basis to ask that question. Mr. Bean told me. Ryan still said he has receipts and he starts pulling them. He starts with attorney Love's initial claim that Adrian Bean never went to the hospital after the incident. And he references the transcript of the police radio from the day of the incident to support what he's saying. At 13.00, Major, where do you want me to bring the bus, meaning the ambulance? Oh, come up here to Cleveland and Old Hayfield. Take a right. I'm standing here. I'll direct you in. That's at 1314. 13 radio following Grady Unit 320 down to Grady Hospital at 2736. Are you en route with another victim? We en route with another suspect. The other suspect. Okay, I copy that. He's 1050. Also, that 1050 is a shot. It says, I don't think so. He's going to be in custody. He's in 83. 83 means another warrant. Mr. Bean at that time had a warrant for the year before for shooting two people. You heard that impeachment. He was the guy that was hit by the car, question mark. I don't know which one the guy he is. This is the one that AC, meaning you heard from uh, AC Booker Higgins, officer, and then got over at the Barber Institute. That is Mr. Bean, in fact. Yeah, that's an affirm. That's affirmed. We got the 83. That's Mr. Bean down here at Grady, and that's a 20. 827. So I knew he was at Grady. Next, Brian still gets into trying to prove that Adrian did in fact give a statement while he was at the hospital. For context, Brian Steele's full assertion is that on the day of the incident, Adrian gets arrested and then is taken to the hospital. Once he got there, one of the detectives goes in to get his statement. But that detective tells Adrian, allegedly, that if he wants to get out of jail, he needs to change his story and his statement to say that Young Thug was also in the car with all of them. So six days after the incident and after the alleged first statement, two other detectives go out to take Adrian's second statement. But they throw away the first statement and say that the second statement is actually the first. Did y'all follow that? But the problem, according to Brian Steele, is that in this second first statement, Adrian mentions that he already spoke to detectives prior to this. September 17, 2013, recorded um, interrogation, Detective David Quinn, Adrian Bean states as follows. Yes, sir. I lied to the detectives when they first came and talked to me. And I told them that's prob and that's probably the lies that you're talking about about detective quinn then said okay what did you tell them adrian bean i told him big fred was driving so we're sitting here 
I had zero, zero information on when Mr. Bean spoke with detectives. So Steele continues on trying to prove that there was, in fact, a hospital statement. And he does so by referencing two different reports from the day of the incident. And Brian Steele also notes that there are some interesting edits between these reports. And your honor... This is where it breaks down corruption, corruption, corruption. And your honor, as my eyes roll out of my head, I'm about to show you why I do not believe the city of Atlanta Police Department at all. And if you will see and take note, on the top is the city of Atlanta Department supplemental incident report, narrative only, page one of one on both C and D. Your honor, the incident report is exactly the same, 13-254-1308. Next paragraph of C and D are identical, Your Honor. Then it starts, he advised that in C is in Colette and Charlie, but in D it says, he advised me during D. Then D is whited out. The entire part is now vacant. Your Honor, at the bottom of C, it is signed, same looking signature, the APD number is written in on D, but it's typed in on C, and it's the same ID number. So when I sit here and I hear Miss Love tell me how diabolical I am and how I don't have a recording or I don't have a statement or I don't have a note or a summary or a writing that Mr. Bean was interviewed at the jail, at the detention center, after Miss Love told this honorable court total misrepresentations, I don't know. I assume that she had good faith belief because that's just what I do with lawyers. But she attacks me like I'm out of my mind when this is in the discovery. This is all she knows this. And then I'm giving CMD, which is clearly going to come out before your court because if the state doesn't call investigative, I'm calling investigative groups because this is what I would say is corruption. Brian still also view he did with Adrian Bean back in January of 2023. During this interview, Adrian tells Brian Steele that he spoke to detectives at the hospital. Am I tripping? Does that seem like corruption or not? But the judge presses him afterwards. Go follow her page or get on her page. She break it down the whole, the whole thing.